going guys? This is Alex here again with Tiny Kyle. Today we're going to be talking about maintenance for a car that needs no introduction. That is right, the Subaru Impreza WRX. Specifically today, the third gen WRX from 2008 to 14, uh, which you can either play cool and get a sedan or you can be the cool kid on the block with your hot hatch. Super hot. As these cars started gaining popularity within the enthusiast market, every kid that grew up watching Nitro Circus and wanted to be just like Travis Pastrana picked one of these up and they started putting them to the test. Pin them around every corner, slide them around in the snow, taking them to the drag strip and doing every modification under the sun. Over that time, these cars had their own set of unique issues that started to pop up. So whether you're looking to buy one, or maybe you already own one, uh, today we're gonna talk about some of the most important things to take care of on your third gen WRX. So the first thing that we wanted to touch base on is the oiling system and any other essential fluids or within the vehicle. Um, oiling being one of the most important with these cars and any car in general, to be honest with you. Um, it's really important that you stick to the Subaru OEM uh, fluid specifications, whether it's uh, the amount of mileage that you're putting on them and the weights of the oil that you're putting into it. These cars are extremely sensitive to changes in fluid dynamics. We urge that you stick to the factory service interval of the oil uh, for your WRX at about 3,000 miles. Just ensures you're gonna get the longest life out of your factory engine and make sure everything's nice and happy in there. While we're on the subject of the oiling system, we wanted to go over a known issue in the Subaru world being their PCB system. Um, when you start to raise the power on these cars, it's very obvious and very apparent that the factory PCB system just isn't up to the task of separating the oil vapors from the crankcase and ensuring that you don't have any sort of gremlins going on in there. Something other manufacturers in the Subaru aftermarket have developed is what's called an air oil separator. What this does is allow for crankcase vapor and pressure to leave the engine, to go into a separate canister to allow water and oil to separate and alleviate crankcase pressure and then return that oil back into your oiling system ensuring that it's clean free of any deposits or free of any water or any sort of accumulation that might be inside of the oil system this is important because the factory pcv system can become overwhelmed with excess crankcase pressures allowing for oil to get into places it doesn't belong like the intercooler or your air intake, and this can also lead to deterioration of other hoses and other things attached to the system. It's really important that you keep air, oil, and water separate in all these systems, and using one of these AOSs will ensure that you have maximum longevity of all of those systems. Next is something that we recommend doing to your WRX if you plan on taking it to a lot of track days, because you're gonna get that little EJ up to some very high temperatures. So hot, in fact, that part of the engine is not gonna receive enough cooling love from the original factory setup. So to prevent this, installing the Cylinder 4 cooling chamber mod uh, is gonna be pretty crucial to making sure that that stagnant coolant um, gets evacuated quick enough so that it doesn't become stagnant and boil and cause detonation or hot spots. Definitely don't want that. The last thing that we wanna talk about, and just briefly here, is the importance of making sure that your calibration is updated to the parts that you have on your vehicle. Uh, Subarus are really sensitive to changes within the engine and the parts that are bolted onto them. So be sure to you know, contact your local calibration expert to make sure that when you make changes to your car, when you would buy parts from us and put them on your car, because you should be buying them from us, that everything is up to par and that the calibration matches everything that's on the car. Moving down the chain of command from the engine to the drivetrain, we wanted to speak on something that's very important to making sure that you ensure the longest possible life of your transmission possible. This of course is servicing the fluid. Pretty simple you know, idea task here. Um, just make sure you're following the factory Subaru specifications for changing the fluid in the front and rear diff as well as the transmission at every 30,000 miles using only the recommended fluid viscosity from Subaru. This is super important. I used to work at a Subaru dealership before I worked here and I saw tons of these cars come in with diff failures and transmission failures and come out with just jet black fluid that looked disgusting that was never changed. Um, so a big part in ensuring a quality lifetime of fun and enjoyment out of your all-wheel drive system is to make sure that you're servicing all of these fluids. Obviously, when you start to put a little bit more power down, there's gonna be issues that arise that are just because the factory system isn't up to the task. Um, with that, you can get into custom gear sets, custom axles, stuff like that. And uh, that's not something that we're gonna typically see out of most daily driver-esque vehicles, but it's something you wanna be aware of when you start to up the power level in these cars. So we know what you're all thinking. Well, Kyle, where the head gasket part at? Oh, my head gasket. <laughs> Honestly, on these 
Turbo model Subarus, WRX and STI, you don't really see typically a lot of head gasket failures at stock or near stock power levels. This is honestly an issue that mostly plagued the NA versions of the EJ engines. Talking about like your mom's legacy wagon. That's right. Don't be knocking the legacy wagon, right? So don't get scared if you hear the internet's bad rap of Subarus and think, oh, these are a terrible car to modify and I'm only gonna be plagued with issues. These cars can be fairly reliable when you put the right parts to them and take proper care of all the components involved, just like any other car. They really just get a bad rap from the internet and we've seen plenty of these cars roll through the shop and have zero issues and have a ton of life. All right guys, again, just like last time, if you think there's any crucial parts that we missed on this video, drop down in the comments, let us know. Uh, let, also let us know what car you might wanna see next. Maybe a, a VA body style WRX, uh, maybe one of the years of the STI. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give a like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe talk about how weird Kyle looks or how funny he sounds. I don't know. Something. Say something funny. Say something funny. All right, peace out guys. <laughs> We're waiting all video to do that. <laughs>